In this section, we discuss quadratic functions and models. But let's start uh, defining a very large um, class of functions that's called polynomials. So these are polynomial functions. Any function can be written that can be written in this form is called polynomial function. Now here we have constants and variables. So the constants are a sub n, a sub n minus one, da da da, up to a one and a zero. These are called coefficients of the polynomial. These are constants actually. And the first coefficient a sub n is called the leading coefficient and a sub 0 is called or a node is called the constant term because we don't have it's not multiplied by some x and this power the highest power is n this is called degree of the polynomial and this should be non-negative integer. So two things, non-negative and integer. Non-negative, that means it can be zero or positive. And integer, and integers, integers are one, two, three, da, da, da. Negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. and zero. Now, let's take an example. If we are given those two functions f of x equals x squared minus 3x. Is this a polynomial? Let's check. We need to check the power. The, the x with the highest power is 2 and the other power is 1 here. So the powers are non-negative and integers. So we are fine. And, and I mean all the powers of x should be non-negative integers. So the powers are 2 and 1. So here we can we find that this is a polynomial. And if we are asked to find the degree, what is the degree of this the polynomial? It is the highest power of x. So this is the degree. n equals 2. Now what is what are the coefficients? Coefficients are 1, the coefficient of x squared and negative 3. What is the leading coefficient? The leading coefficient uh, is the coefficient of x squared, x with the highest power. So that's 1. And the constant term is we don't have or uh, the constant term doesn't appear here but it's 0. We can add 0 to this and that will be our a constant term. Now let's take another example. If we are given this function, is this a polynomial? Let's see. We need to first look at the powers. What is the power of square root x? This is this can be written as x to the power one half plus 2x. The power here is positive, non-negative, but this is not an integer, not an integer. So this is not a polynomial. Now it should be clear how to distinguish between polynomial and other functions. And so if I give you a function like this, Now here, if you look at the powers, the power is non-negative integer, and the power here is, it looks non-negative integer, but this is in the denominator. This does not take the form of the function of the quadratic of the polynomial. So we need to bring this up here in order to determine if this is polynomial or not. And as you can see, when we bring this x up, here, it bec uh, the power becomes negative. This is not a non-negative 
integer. So that means not a polynomial. And so on. We have many examples, you can think about them, but you, all what you need to do is to test the powers of x to make sure that the power is the powers are non-negative integers. Now quadratic functions are functions that belong to this class of functions, to polynomials. So quadratic functions are polynomials, polynomials of degree n equals 2, of degree 2. So we can rewrite write it this in this form, f of x equals a times x to the power 2 plus a plus b times x plus c where a is not equal to 0 because if it's equal to 0 then this is no longer uh, quadratic. Now this is called the general form. This is general form of quadratic functions. So we, we've seen many quadratic functions before. For example, f of x equals x squared. This is a quadratic function and the graph looks like this. And as you can see, the function is symmetric about x equals 0. This is the axis of symmetry. If symmetry. And uh, the graph is open up. This is called parabola. Graphs of quadratic functions are called parabola. And this is open up because the coefficient of x squared, the leading coefficient, is greater than 0. If it's greater than 0, then the graph is open up. And the vertex is important as well. The vertex here is 0, 0. Now, in many cases, it's if we want to get more information about the function and if we want to, uh, uh, to make uh, graphing functions easier, and to know more things, uh, many things about, uh, for example, uh, whether the function is uh, open up, open down, or uh, what the vertex, and uh, all these things, uh, the the domain and the range. The domain is always negative infinity to infinity, but the range um, is different. For example, for even powers, uh, for odd powers, negative infinity to infinity, but for even powers. Uh, in general, for polynomials, it's not the case, but that means quadratic functions have even powers because the quadratic function has power 2. So the we need to determine uh, the range. So all these things can be derived from an equivalent form. The equivalent form, I mean equivalent to the general form, equivalent form of quadratic functions is the following. We can write any quadratic function in this form, a times x minus h or is to power 2 plus k, where a is the leading coefficient. And if this is greater than 0, it's open up the parabola is open up. If a is less than 0, it's open down. And if the absolute value of a is greater than 0, then we have vertical uh, stretching, or this is vertically stretched. And if the absolute value of a is less than 0, uh, less than 1, sorry, I should use 1 here, less than 1, that means it's vertically shrunk. I mean here it's wider, and here it's narrower. Now what is h and k? hk, the ordered pair, 
edge k is called the vertex. So if we convert a function to this formula, or to this form, it becomes very easy to find the vertex. And axis of symmetry is x equals h. This is axis of symmetry. And for k, we have two cases. If k is greater than 0, then we have a vertical shift by k units, units up. And if k is less than 0, then we have vertical shift by k units down. Now what about h? For h, if h is greater than 0, then we have horizontal shift by h units right and if h is less than 0 then we have horizontal shift by absolute value of h units right if it's less than 0 this is left and uh, same thing for k less than 0. Then we have shift by absolute value of k down, units down. OK, all these information can be obtained from uh, this form. This is called standard form, standard form of quadratic functions. OK, now we also can find the range. The domain is negative infinity to infinity, but the range is, it depends on, uh, on whether the function is open up or open down. If it's open up, then the domain is k to infinity. And if it's open down, then the domain is negative infinity to k. Now, how to convert from this form, the general form to quadratic to a standard form, this is what we learned after the discussing an example. So let me introduce the following example. If we are given f of x written in the standard form, negative one half times x minus four squared plus three, and we want to graph this function. So we first start with the very basic function. The basic function is x squared. So we graph x squared here. This is x squared. And then we need to make horizontal shift because x, we have negative 4, or uh, 4 is reduced from x. That means we have shift 4 units to the right. So horizontal shift by 4 units right so the graph becomes this this is x minus 4 squared and then we multiply by 1 half let's multiply first by positive 1 half and then we change the sign so we have We, this becomes, if we multiply by a less than 1, then we have vertic the graph is vertically shrunk. That means wider. So we, the graph looks like this. Here we have 4, and the graph looks like this. So this is after multiplying by 1 half. So this is vertically shrunk. Now we have negative sign here. So when we multiply by negative sign, this graph is reflected about the x-axis. So the graph becomes this. 
So this is after multiplying by a negative sign. And then we have, so this, the function became negative one half times x minus four squared, and we are left with adding three. So we need, or we need to add three to this function. So if we add three, we added three to the whole function. That means we have um, horizontal, we need to, we have shift up three units. So this means shift up by three units. So the graph becomes this. So this is negative one half x minus four squared plus three. Now this is just a rough graph of the of a function just to show you what happens if we write the function in the standard form. But how to convert now from the standard form, this standard form we can find important information. For example, what is the vertex? The vertex is h k. What is h? H is four. We ignore the negative sign. The negative sign is already there because as you can see in the in this form we have negative signs so h is the number just next to the negative sign so h is 4 and k is this number here so it's 3 so that means the vertex is 4 3 as we can see from here the vertex is 4 3 and axis of symmetry axis of symmetry is x equals h but h is 4 so x equals 4 and what is the range uh, of this function the domain is negative infinity to infinity for all polynomials for uh, i mean for uh, for all polynomials it's negative infinity to infinity now range is since a is greater than zero as you can see a is negative one half is less than zero since a is less than zero it's open down so if it's open down then the range is negative infinity to k so negative infinity to three and we have many other information can be obtained from this nice form of quadratic functions now how to convert from general form to quadratic Four. let's take an example here so we want to know how to convert quadratic form I mean a quadratic function from general form a general form to the standard form. So to do that, we need a tool. The tool is called completing the square. And we've seen this before. And we use this uh, to solve some quadratic equations. So completing the square. Now how to do this? Let's take an example. If we are given the function, the quadratic function f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 7, this is written in the general form of quadratic functions. We want to convert it into the standard form. So how to do this? We first look at a. a is equal to 1. a is the coefficient of x squared, so we can complete the square directly. If it's not one then we need to take that number as a common factor okay now we take one half the coefficient of x the coefficient of x i mean b is one half times six or negative six doesn't matter the negative sign will not affect this because we have square here so one half of six is three squared is nine and then we add and subtract nine 
here. So we add it here and subtract it. So this equation becomes, or this function becomes x squared minus 6x. We start with the positive, plus 9 minus 9 plus 7. Now the first three terms form a complete square. This is a complete square because we already completed the square by this step, step 2. Now when we complete the square we can write this, these th first three terms as x and the mid sign or middle sign is negative and the square root of 9 is 3 and we put the square here so the square becomes over the whole expression instead of being over x. Now negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2. Now this is this function is written in the standard form. Now from this standard form a equals 1 this is a, a equals 1 greater than 0 so it's open up the vertex is hk, h is 3, and k is negative 2. And the axis of symmetry is x equals h, and that means x equals 3, because h is 3. And we can find x-intercept, for example. What is x-intercept? In order to find x-intercept, we need to set y equals 0. This is y. y equals 0 equals x minus 3 squared minus 2. And then we add 2 to both sides. We want to solve for x. So we get x minus 3 squared equals 2. And then we take square root of both sides. But here we take it becomes plus or minus square root of the right hand side after canceling. 2, we get x minus 3 equals plus or minus square root 2, and then we have x equals 3 plus or minus square root 2, so we have two x-intercepts, 3 plus square root 2 and 3 minus square root 2, and both of them are positive. Now we can find y-intercept y-intercept we set x equals 0 when x equals 0 this becomes 0 minus 3 squared minus 2 and that is 9 minus 2 which is equal to 7 so the y-intercept is 0 7 now we can graph the function easily be, here we have x, this is y. What is the vertex of the function? The vertex is uh, 3 and negative 2. 3 on x and negative 2. So this point 3, negative 2. This is the vertex. And since the, the, the graph is open up, this is the lowest point in the graph. And what are the x-intercept? We have two intercepts here 3 plus 3 2 x intercepts 3 plus a square root 2 it's a number here let's see 3 plus square root 2 here and 3 minus a square root 2 say here this is 3 minus square root 2 so the graph should intersect the x-axis at those two points and now we have y intercept is 0 7 let's say this point is 0 7 this is the y-intercept and we have we can extend this from here as you can see now the axis of symmetry is x equals 3 and this is the graph of the function now this is just a rough graph but it's it seems uh, including all the informations that we need because we have the vertex the axis of symmetry the x intercepts and the y intercepts now let's take um, another example but with a coefficient of x squared so if we have f of x equals negative 3 x squared minus 2 x plus 1 and we want to graph to convert this into standard form we start with 
the following observation a equals negative 3 the coefficient of x squared the leading coefficient is negative 3 it's not equal to 1 that means we need to uh, take this as a common factor because we can't uh, complete the square directly so we have to take negative 3 as a common factor and what's left here is x squared here we have plus 2 thirds x and then we have plus 1 here if we want to check just multiply negative 3 by the first and the second terms now we complete the square of this expression inside the parentheses so we have 1 half times b all squared so 1 half times 2 thirds this is b squared this is 2 ninths squared and when we square it we get or we can simplify before we square it we can cancel 2 with 2 and we get 1 third square which is 1 ninth so 1 ninth can be added here inside the parentheses added and subtracted here inside the parentheses so this becomes negative 3 times x squared plus 2 thirds x now we start with the positive 1 ninth then negative 1 ninth plus 1 and then but we only need the first three terms so let's multiply this term by negative 3 and then bring it outside the parentheses so we have negative 3 times x squared plus 2 thirds x plus 1 ninth plus 1 now when we multiply negative 1 ninth by negative 3 we get 1 third and here the function becomes f of x equals negative 3 times now we need to com this is complete square so since it's complete square we can write it as what is the square root of x squared is x what is the first the middle sign it's positive and what is square root of one ninth is one third all squared plus now one one plus one third is two thirds and or this is four thirds now this is written in the standard form and from that we can get many information about the function for example what is the vertex the vertex is negative one third and four thirds and we know that the axis of symmetry is uh, x equals one third and we have also uh, the uh, since a is equals to negative is equal to negative three which is less than zero then it's open down and we have the x intercept x intercept we set y equals 0 so we have 0 equals negative 3 times x plus 1 third squared plus 4 thirds and then we subtract 4 thirds from both sides to get uh, negative 4 thirds equals negative 3 times x plus 1 third square and then we divide by negative 3 both sides to get on the right hand side 4 ninths equals x plus 1 third squared and then we solve this for x so we take square root of both sides we get one, x plus 1 third without this square equals plus or minus square root 4 ninths which is plus or minus 2 thirds so we have x plus 1 third equals 2 thirds and x plus 1 third equals negative 2 thirds we solve these two linear equations subtract one third from both sides to get x equals uh, one third and x equals negative one so these are x intercepts one third and zero and negative one and zero these are the x intercepts what are the y intercepts y intercept we get we set x equals zero so the equation becomes y equals now negative three times zero squared minus two times zero plus one or we can substitute into or plug x equals zero into the uh, standard form so we get one so y equals one 
the graph intersect the y-axis at 0, 1. Now we have pretty much all the information that we need so we can graph the function uh, and intercepts. We have uh, x equals 1 third and x equals negative 1. So I don't want to uh, miss any point here. So x equals 1 third, this is 1 third, and x equals negative 1, this is negative 1. So these are the inter x-intercepts. Now let's do the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 1. So 0, 1, this point here. This is the y-intercept. Now what is the vertex? The vertex is negative 1 third, 4 thirds. Negative 1 third is here. This is negative 1 third. 4 thirds is greater than 1. So let's say here, 4 thirds. So this is the vertex. It's open down. That means we make an arc open down. And then we connect these points. As you can see, this is the graph of the function. And axis of symmetry is x equals negative one third. So this is the graph of our function. And we can apply this for different functions, but these this is pretty much the idea of completing the square and converting from the standard uh, from the general form to the standard form now we have we notice that notice that uh, the vertex can be obtained in different way if we have the original function if we don't convert it uh, to the uh, standard form we can find the vertex finding the vertex from the uh, the general form. From the general form, we can find the vertex because the general form is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can find the vertex by applying this formula negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. Now, for our, for example, for our previous example, we had f of x equals negative 3 x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now if we want to find the vertex from this formula, we have negative b. b is negative 2 over 2 times a. This is a, this is b, this is c. So 2 times a, 2 times negative 3. And the image of this. So negative, negative, positive, we have 2 over 2 times negative 3, negative 6, and half of this. And this is now 2 over 6, negative 2 over negative 6 is negative 1 third, and f of negative 1 third. Now we substitute negative third into this function to get the image of negative 1 third. So it's negative 3 times negative 1 third squared minus 2 times negative 1 third plus 1. Simplifying this, we get now negative, one th negative 3 times 1 ninth. Uh, plus two thirds plus one. Now this is negative one third plus two thirds plus one is three over three. So we have five, we have four thirds. So the vertex is negative one third and four thirds as we've seen in the previous example. But as you can see, converting the function into uh, the standard form makes makes it easier to find to get many information one of them is the vertex directly from the graph now we have we have uh, some uh, no another note here uh, vertex the vertex can be because now we are talking about, we will start talking about some applications or uh, models of by quadratic functions so vertex can be the highest point or the maximum point and that happens when a is less than 0 so the graph looks like this up and down so the vertex is the highest point or the lowest point and if it's lowest point, then it's minimum. So
So this happens when A is greater than zero, so it's open up, the vertex will be the lowest point of the graph. Now let's do one example on modeling using quadratic functions. Uh, the model under study is the following. S of t, this is the height of an object after projection, is negative 16 t squared plus v, uh, v node t, the initial velocity times t plus s0. s0 is the initial height. So let me write here, this is initial height and uh, negative 16 uh, now s of t is the height of an object after projection projection and uh, here negative 16 is a constant this is a constant based um, based on uh, gravitational force Gravitational force and v naught is the initial velocity and this is this is can be done uh, by neglecting air resistance air resistance so we are talking about projections uh, this is a general uh, equation or function that represent the height of the height of an object after projection so let's take an example of this. For example, a ball is projected directly uh, upward and from an initial uh, height h, which is s, s of t, of 100 feet with initial velocity of uh, with initial velocity of 80 feet per second now here we are asked to first to give the function give the function uh, that describes that describes the height of the ball in terms of time t so we want to find the height we are talking about height here so we use this uh, this function this model so using this model we find that s of t is negative 16 t squared plus uh, v naught t plus s zero uh, but we know that v naught is 80 so we write here this is v naught and the 100 is s zero so we can write this as negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 100 this is the function that describes the highest of the pole uh, uh, in terms of time t now for b we are we want to find after how many after how many seconds does the ball reach its maximum height we want to find the maximum height since the uh, leading coefficient is negative it's up and down so we have a maximum point here now and then we want to find what is this maximum what is this maximum height now in this case we need to find k so we want to find k so we first find after how many seconds that means we need to find t so to find t that makes the height uh, maximum this point is hk so to find this vertex this is maximum 
uh, this is t h represents t time and k is the maximum value the maximum height so that means we need to find the vertex the vertex is can be obtained from this form this form is not the standard form is the general form so it's negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a now we find tt is negative b over 2a and that is negative 80 over 2 times negative 16 this is equal to 2.5 and then we find the image of this f of 2.5 is negative 16 times 2.5 squared plus 80 times 2.5 plus 100 and this is 200 feet this is the maximum height and that occurs after two seconds and half so this is a good application of quadratic functions now if we want to if we are asked more if, uh, if we are asked to find for example for what interval for what interval of time the highest point or the height of the the height of the ball of the ball uh, is, uh, greater the, is greater than than uh, 160 feet the, we want to find the interval in which the height is greater than 160 feet so that means we need to find this interval here this interval that makes the height greater than 16 so we are looking for the values of t or x because t is the horizontal uh, distance okay so that means we want the function s of t to be greater than 160 and then we solve for t so we have negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 100 is greater than 100 and then uh, 160 and then we subtract 160 from both sides and simplify the inequality it becomes negative 16 t squared plus 80 t uh, minus 60 is less than 0 is greater than 0 and then we divide by uh, negative 4 to simplify this more let's divide by negative 4 so if we divide each term by negative 4 this will be reversed it becomes less than 0 so we have 4 t squared minus 8 minus uh, 20 t Uh, plus 15 is less than 0 now it's simpler to find we can now solve for t to find the interval uh, to find the points the critical points or the points where the function is equal to 0 and then we can study the sign and we want to the sign to be in order to solve this we want to design to be let less than zero so we find we use the quadratic formula to find t t is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 a c over 2 a so this is negative negative tw uh, negative 20 plus or minus square root negative 20 squared minus 4 times 4 times 15 times 15 all over 2 times a 2 times 4 and then we get t equals using the calculator we get t equals 0.92 and t e uh, can be approximated as 4.08 so that means the two points here are 0.92 and 4.08 and now we study the sign in order to study the sign we can choose some test values for example a value here like 5 a value here like uh, 1 value here like 0 and study the sign let's substitute 0 if we substitute 0 here we get 
a positive value. If we substitute 5 and compute this, we get positive. If we substitute 1, 4 times 1 is 4, minus 20 is negative 16, plus 5, plus 15 is negative 1. So the function is negative. I mean the solution, because we want to, f to find the values of t that make this uh, inequality correct. That means this expression is less than 0, less than 0 on this interval. So t belongs to the interval uh, 0.92 and 4.08 for t belonging uh, the, for all values of t that belong to this interval the function the ball um, uh, is greater than uh, 160 feet is greater than 160 feet now the last part here is after how much after how many seconds and that means we are asked to find t here well the ball hit the ground or hit the earth or the ground so we want to find t as well here how many that means t and hit the ground hit the ground when height is equal to zero it hits the ground when the height is zero so that means negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 100 is equal to zero and then we solve this uh, equation for t we apply the quadratic formula negative 80 plus or minus 80 square root 80 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 100 all over 2 times negative 16 and using the calculator we find that t can be approximated as negative 1.04 and t is approximated as 6.04 we reject the first value because it's negative and time cannot be negative and we accept the second one so the ball hits the ground after about 6.04 seconds.